You might think that using just three colors, three primary colors, is going to really limit your options as far as developing really interesting and nuanced colors. So in this lesson, I want to show you just a small sampling of the variety of neutral colors that you can mix with very, very few initial colors. And one of the biggest challenges, of course, is going to be mixing black. So on these first three squares on the top row, I'm going to show you three different blacks that we can mix. Now mixing any neutral, including black, is basically going to be a combination of all three primary colors. What makes the difference is the ratio or the balance between these three colors. So typically when we're going to mix a black, we're going to have a strong foundation of blue. And this is for a couple of reasons. Blue tends to have the darkest local value, meaning especially if you compare it to yellow, you can see that the value of blue is much darker. When we combine blue with red and we have a fully saturated, fully chromatic color, we get a very deep violet. And this alone can actually create a nice chromatic black. But if we add just a little bit of yellow to that, it really neutralizes it down. So here in this first square, I'm going to mix a black that leans a little bit more blue. So the ratio of blue in this mixture is pretty strong in comparison with the other two primary colors, yellow being the least. So here we have a nice cool black and a cool gray that I created by just adding a little bit more water into the pigment. Now I'm going to try to mix a nice neutral black, something that registers more as a true black to most of us. And this can be a little bit of a challenge because when the mixture is so dark as it is, it can be a little bit difficult to judge if it's leaning a little bit too cool or maybe a little bit too warm. But basically, again, I need a strong foundation of blue to give it a nice dark value. Quite a bit of red, but this time I added just a little bit more yellow than I did the first time. And so you're gonna see that compared to the square over on the left, this is going to be much warmer in temperature. And then by the time I get the last square painted and you compare all three of these, you're gonna see that this is really a nice neutral black, a nice neutral gray in the lower part of this square. And again, just to get a little bit of a lighter value so that it registers as more of a gray. I just added a little bit more water just to lighten the value a little bit. And I'm going to be using this same pile or mixture of color for all six of these squares. So I'm not ever going to have to start over from scratch. I'm going to use what's already there. And basically what I'm doing is I'm adding pigment just to shift the temperature or the ratio of pigment. Now in this last square, I want a nice warm black. And so I need to have, again, that strong base of blue because that's going to be my darkest value. But then I added more red to the mixture and didn't add too much yellow, but I was able to be pretty liberal with the yellow because this is going to be a nice warm black. And then again, for the warm gray here, I just added a little bit of water to bring the value up a little bit, make that a little bit lighter in value. And so I think if you look at the square on the left and the square on the right, compare those with that square in the middle, and that really looks like a really nice neutral black, what we would kind of think of as a stereotypical black. So you can see that even with just three colors, you can definitely mix a lot of nice dark neutral colors and blacks. And now in this bottom row, what I'm going to be mixing is three different versions of what I would consider to be browns. So this first square is going to have more of a reddish brown. And so obviously I reused that same mixture that I had used before for the blacks. I just basically added a lot of red to that and a little bit of yellow. It still has some blue in it, which is what neutralizes it so that it's not orange. 
Now in this middle square, I want to have more of a yellow brown, so kind of a neutralized yellow. So because red is such a strong pigment, I do have to add quite a bit of yellow into this. And remember, because I reused the same pile from the blacks, there's already some blue in there. And unlike black with any kind of brown or warm neutral, you don't need to have that strong foundation of blue in there, but you do need at least a little bit just to neutralize it a bit. And then in the last square, I'm actually going to mix a greenish brown. And I often think of this as being kind of an olive green color. And really you can neutralize every color. I could show you endlessly how to mix every secondary and tertiary color and neutralize them to get a lot of really interesting nuance. But that's a little bit more advanced and we're just gonna keep it simple for this class. And so basically what I'm doing is I added a lot of yellow into that mixture and then just a little bit of blue. And remember, because this is the same pile that we used before, it already has a little bit of red in there, which is what neutralizes the green and makes it a little bit more brown. So you can see that this is a really nice olive green here. So I hope that you can see that just from these couple of examples, there are is such a huge range of color that you can mix even starting from just three primary colors. It's really limitless and I will show you in a subsequent video that I can actually match a lot of pre-mixed colors using just these three colors. So I really encourage you to try to start simple, get to know these pigments, and get to know what you can do with them. That really unlocks your potential as a painter and helps you get to know color on a more intimate level.